Welcome back to Talent on Tap. We are excited to dig into a really cool topic, which is talent analytics. And we've got a couple special guests here who are experts in this area. Why don't you introduce yourself, guys? Hi, my name is RJ Milner. I'm the head of talent analytics at Chevron. And my name is Will Gaker. I'm on the talent analytics team at LinkedIn. Welcome, guys. Yeah, so let's get started, shall we? Let's get into it. All right, so welcome. In one tweet, how would you define talent analytics for this audience? Yeah, so you know, for us, and the way we look at it, talent analytics is really about informing and supporting business strategy. And we do that through people data. OK. Very cool. Will, would you change that tweet? No, I, my personal mission is I want to be HR's nerdy best friend. And so I uh, <laughs> use data and analytics to help companies build a business case for their people. Yep. Uh, so my background's a little bit different. My background's in economics, investment banking, and consulting, management oh, wow. consulting. And so I think what you find, I mean, to Will's point, is that in analytics, it's a mixed bag of backgrounds. You tend to have data science skills, math skills, but uh, consulting skills are really important to be able to tell the story of what we're seeing inside the data. Uh, in fact, inside Chevron, one of our biggest learnings over the past couple of years is looking for talent in non-traditional places. If, if we define the core capabilities for analytics, some things we were just talking about, uh, we don't have to necessarily look in the traditional places, whether it's HR or IT. So we've looked at what are the core capabilities around uh, math, science, storytelling, business acumen, and realized we have that talent in uh, places all across the enterprise, whether it's HR, uh, our petrotechs, our petrophysicists. I have a petroleum engineer, an astrophysicist on the team, all different kinds of people with the same capabilities. And that creates a diversity of thought on the team, uh, but also accelerates learning tremendously on the team. We know the field is changing, growing quickly. There, I think it was a, a Deloitte survey last year, this year actually in 2016, that um, said that this is one of the most important areas within the HR function. Can you talk a little bit about the world of reporting and the world that we live in and that you guys work in around insights and analytics? So what's the difference? I mean, some advice in terms of how you shift your thinking and what are some examples of this shift? Sure. Um, so when we think about kind of the shift that's been happening, I think of it as moving from metrics to analytics. And uh, or you can think of that as reporting to analytics as well. And okay. that not very long ago, we were looking at what are the key metrics I need to track and then getting that out. So a lot of the usual suspects, headcount, hiring, attrition, all important things. But uh, those are just uh, metrics that we measure. Uh, what we're seeing now is a shift to analytics. And that is, you know, how am I transforming that data to answer a business problem, to provide some kind of unique insight? Um, and so one of the things that a lot of the tools that Will was talking about are providing is a way to democratize that data, if you will. So how do I get that, that information, those insights, out to the end users quickly? So it's nice having that inside a, a COE or an island, but what we really need to do is get that out to the line managers who can take action on that data quickly. Uh, one of the shifts that, uh, that we're seeing uh, specifically is it's great to democratize that information, but we also need to democratize capability. So if we think about our HR teams, there's a need uh, to become more data fluent and understand, well, how do I take that data that I'm now getting faster than ever mm -hmm. and make decisions based upon that and help drive, drive business decisions? And so we're really focusing on not only engaging our uh, people analysts out in the field, but also our HR business partners and advisors, uh, thinking about how do I use data to make decisions? I, I know we've been on, on this journey. I can remember uh, at least one of our business leaders saying, thank you so much for telling me about this problem that I didn't know I had. Yes. So al along those lines, Will, maybe can you, can you give a couple examples of the types of questions or sort of hypothesis that maybe someone like Pat may come to you with and say, hey, I, you know, I think there is something I need to look at, a business problem that needs to be solved, like the type of statement or question that- He's got that, several, I'm that, sure. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> Yeah, so sometimes it's as simple as just getting the basics and getting informed around what your headcount numbers look like, what your attrition looks like, what your hiring progress looks like. And then it's kind of going even at a deeper level to understand what is driving those metrics to try to get ahead of it so that you're not only looking backwards at what happened this year, you're starting to look ahead at what's going to happen next year. So anywhere from, hey, how are we doing with, uh, with meeting our headcount goals? Are we hiring fast enough? Are we hiring the right skills that's going to help us take our business to the next level? all the way to are we retaining those skills at the same rate uh, compared to other parts of the business? And if uh, attrition's higher than we want it to be, is there anything that we can understand about what the root cause of attrition is or things that we can do from a retention play, a talent management play, a learning and development play, 
so that we can actually retain the skills and hire the skills that are going to help us achieve our business strategy. Uh, but when you think about the most important measures, the way we look at that at Chevron is it's based upon our business strategy. So we look at what's our strategy, what are we trying to accomplish, and then we figure out how does HR affect that, and that helps us understand what our metrics are. So the top three metrics for us are probably different than the top three metrics for you because our strategy is different than your strategy. That's brilliant. That is brilliant because I worry about you're chasing the wrong rabbit is how I would phrase it. And so if you're looking at business opportunities, the strategy, the problems that the business is facing, it gives you the ability to triage. You know, Will, you and I chat about this all the time. What is it that we're trying to drive to? Test a hypothesis, and those become your metrics that you keep your eye on, both currently and in the future, to see are you improving it, are you achieving the goals and talent, the quality of talent, and the retentive nature of that talent. So great strategy. Thanks. And will a follow-up question to that, what are, what are the things in terms of process and data that people should focus on immediately to start building to the place where these types of insights and answering these questions can be solved? Yeah, I think the, the main thing is if you can ask a question, you can actually get a lot out of analytics. You don't have to have a really expansive data infrastructure necessarily. You can be pretty uh, dangerous with an Excel spreadsheet. The one thing that I would say is the absolute, absolute most critical ingredient for getting started in this is connecting insight to the context of the business. So people like me and RJ, we're focusing a lot on getting you the insight, being diving deep into the data, being buried in the spreadsheets, so on to speak. So we don't always have enough time to come up for air and look around at what's going on in the business. And so what I like to tell the partners that I work with is you know the business like the back of your hand, I know the numbers like the back of my hand, together we're gonna tell better stories when we partner. And so if you're in the analytics space, your job is to find insight and connect that to the context of the business. If you're not in the analytics space, your job is to be, in a lot of ways, a question asker and a context provider. So that when you're working with someone like, like me and RJ, um, we actually get the insight into the context of the business and that allows us to take action. That's such a good point. Great advice. Yeah, I like that. And in closing, RJ, where do you see the future of talent analytics and what do you think it will do for the profession of HR that we're in? You're asking the predictive analytics guy to do yeah, some predictions. Yeah, you should have um, the answer. <laughs> so, Open to the book. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, th there's been so much movement in analytics. It's one of the things that makes it, makes it exciting. If we look ahead, some of the things that, that I personally uh, think are, are really exciting are the work around network analytics. So it's very appropriate that we're talking here today. Uh, if you think about networks of teams as a new leadership style, uh, understanding how those teams are connected, who are the bridgers between networks, um, who are those influencers in those, inside those networks, I think there's a tremendous amount of, of energy there and things that we can accomplish to drive the business forward. Uh, the other thing that, that I see happening is more and more use of continuous listening to help understand our workforce and improve the employee experience. Uh, so we're seeing you know, moves from annual uh, surveys to more pulse surveys. I think what we're seeing is moving from pulse surveys to say continuous listening techniques uh, to, uh, to really give our employees the best possible experience. So those are two things that I see on the horizon. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for being here, guys. We'll see you next time on Talent on Top.